Hi, hey, welcome to episode 7 of Better Heron Sailing. Uh, in this episode we're going to cover the centerboard and rudder, the bits under the boat that you uh, often don't think about when you're on the water um, or when you are thinking about it, you're not quite 100% certain what to do with them. Um, so we're going to take a bit of a look at how we actually calibrate our centerboard and rudder and the setup initially as well to make sure that at least you're in the right ballpark to get the boat balancing and performing to its best. So this is with the boards all the way down. You can see the center board is 90 degrees to the boat as per the rules. We um, set it up to maximum depth and we actually set it up to maximum aft position as well as per the rules. Now setting up to those rules, it's best to probably consult with your local measurer um, or class ex local class expert for measuring that correctly as particularly the position um, or from the transom for the maximum aft position of the centerboard is determined by uh, your transom angle as well. So that needs to be measured at the same time. Um, but anyway, that's the, that's the key bit. So I'll get into the positions that we actually set up our boards at while we're sailing. Um, so as you can see, that's all the way down. That's everything up until we're starting to uh, sort of drop main sheet and getting a little bit overpowered. So the second we actually get on the side of the boat and we're both hiking, um, we actually bring our centerboard back quite quickly um, to what we call the we call it the, the hand position or four fingers at the top of the centerboard. Um, so if Charlie's in the boat, he's just going to put us to that position. And there it is. So that's four fingers. And you can see a key thing that's happened is the centerboard's raked, which means your center resistance gone back. But the other thing which is uh, quite nice in the Heron is that makes the trailing edge now a vertical surface, um, which on a lot of designs is the most efficient way for a board to operate. Um, now look, there's lots of theories around the shapes of center boards and you know, positions and all the rest of it, but this is um, a position that we have found is quite works really well in the Heron and it just happens that that trailing edge ends up quite vertical. So if we are in stronger winds again, um, we may even go to slightly more than that. Charlie just goes an, a little bit further. Um, yeah, that'll do you, Charlie. You can see the key other thing with the sweeping setup on the Heron is you lose very little area as the board is um, sweeping back. So you can balance out your rudder and your weather helm just by tilting your center board and you won't lose any height. Um, as far as centerboard resistance is concerned. The area that you're losing is so small. Anyway, so let's um, move it now to where we set up for uh, reaching and around the top mark. And initially we go to what we call our first position for reaching, which is actually the same depth as the rudder. So Charlie, can you just move to the first mark? Okay, so stopping there, you can see we're at the same depth as the rudder. Um, centerboard's quite swept back, possibly more than what you'd expect, but that's just our initial setup around the top mark. This isn't yet our fast reaching position. Um, once we're all settled down and we're happy, we uh, assuming that the reach isn't too tight, we go back a bit further to our normal reaching position. And you can see this is the spot where, fraction further Charlie, the back of the centerboard has now completely closed the case. And you can see there, that where centerboard slot is full front to back. The centerboard is almost working like a, a gasket at this point. And it's actually, yeah, a very efficient way of um, going downwind. It's also, yeah, as much centerboard as you really need for going downwind on a heron. Now, the last position is if we're running square. Now, the running square position for us is actually pretty close to the skeg depth. So if you now want to go to the square run position, Charlie, Okay, you can see there it is there, and we now have a bit of a, uh, a sawtooth bottom, but we pretty much set the centerboard up to the same frontal area as our, as our skeg for the minimum amount of resistance, and the rudder then is, um, yeah, you're working as, as efficiently as we can to um, get the boat downwind as fast as we possibly can. Okay, you can see here the um, setup of our rudder blade um, in the fully down position is possibly somewhat different to a, a lot of the boats set up out there. Um, this is exactly how Peter has set this boat up and Kylie sailed with the boat. Um, and it's the same as it's set up on APOW, which is very close to the skeg, basically touching the skeg in the fully down position. 
and center line on the boat and pretty much allows for the cleanest exit of the water um, off the skeg almost makes the rudder part of the boat um, and this causes the least amount of aeration and drag issues um, on your boat and really does give the helm a very nice balanced even response upwind so here's the inside of the boat um, and the centerboard up down um, set up on this boat which is again the same as what we've got on APOW um, now there are some faded marks here um, from when Kylie's used the boat last and we'll see how close they end up to our normal calibration marks um, as a matter of interest um, when we go to these our normal settings so the board's fully down at the moment back of the case um, we've got a green down line and a red up line and you'll see when we pull on that how easy it works now when I was talking about um, four fingers before for the first setting up wind um, that's how many fingers we can fit down the back of the case there so if I go to about our fourth finger mark there's three okay there's four now that was that uh, mark that se uh, setting where the rear of the center board became vertical in the in the boat and you can see we've got those little red marks there I can actually just see there a faded uh, number there from from what Kylie's used so they're obviously using a very similar sort of setup to what that is uh, on our typical thing now as it gets windier we will go as far as about that normally um, upwind you can see it's a whole hand now and that's sort of in 20 knot stuff and surprising how quickly we are raking the board now we really get to that first setting pretty much as when both of us are hiking going upwind um, now second setting best way to mark that is to pull until we've, we've got to our spot now underneath here Charlie has already marked our spot and you can see our red line is appearing and there it is there and funny enough there's Kylie's um, reaching line and we've now got that line set up on the side of the board exactly so I'll just draw it on like I'd normally draw on the boat and mark that board and there we are with our our first reaching position now second reaching position we've just put a little reference mark again there we are there so our second one now we'll draw our second line and you can see it's just beyond it and then finally our run position which looks like Kylie's got an F if we again have a look back down here for where our line is and there it is there that's the one where it's at the skeg depth we're actually at exactly the same spot again we might, won't mark through our other lines with that one we'll just put a mark for and after like that and there we go that's how you calibrate your centerboard so again down and up for us we can actually work the centerboard while we're hiking from the rail the crew can do it from the front of the boat or the skipper can do it from the back of the boat there's just a couple of turning blocks here and you can see when the block runs forward the shock cord here takes up and on that side it does exactly the same thing with the red line and takes up that way as well